let me introduce you to our featured guest today. Now in her third decade of spiritual teaching, Dr. Linda Howe is an award-winning author, teacher, and world-renowned leading expert in the field of Akashic Studies. She was the first person to bring the Akashic Records to the world community and make teachable access to the records available to anyone with a desire to learn. Starting in 1996, Wow. She founded the Linda Howe Center for Akashic Studies in Chicago in 2001. So I guess that's officially 20 years ago. <laughs> wow. Uh, teaching thousands of people globally. We'll talk about that later. Howe focuses on the Akashic Records as a spiritual resource for personal empowerment and transformation, which, I mean, frankly, perfect given that the personal journey and the business journey are really very much about empowerment and transformation. So first, just because I think some people don't know, tell us briefly about the Akashic Record. What is it? Why does it make a difference? Okay, <laughs> great question. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's just it's thrilling to be here. It's really like a bonus to be here on inauguration day. Yeah. Right. Because it's a multidimensional inauguration for so many of us. I know it's like, whoa. And so it's really, it's great that we can be together and that our focus is really a, a multidimensional inauguration. Yeah. The dovetailing, right, of the personal and the professional. Yeah. So so thank you, but I want to, the Akashic Record, the Akashic Record, this is the most simple definition, is a vibrational archive of every soul and its human journey, okay? Everyone's in the record. There are two parts to it, permanent and evolving. Um, the Akashic Record is a sacred dimension it is a realm of light. It is not a deity, but it is a realm of light that empowers us to recognize, identify, live, and express our truth. And um, it's, a, it's, it's located at the level of the soul. So it's a soul level dimension of consciousness. Everyone is in it. And anyone who is... Um, Anybody who really has a desire to connect with it can with some good teaching, right? Clear understanding, good teaching, and you're, you're off, you're, you're good to go. And you can use it for your own growth, transformation, as well as empowering others to the same. I really tried to keep that down. You know, this no, is, I, I could it, talk for five days about what the Akashic <laughs> Record is. Well, you train, like, you train this. So of course you could talk for days and days. And now I, you know, like in my uh, thinking, I was going to ask you when and why did you start working with the Akashic Records? And of course it says third decade of spiritual teaching. So did you, <laughs> did you have a precursor to? Well, your... I do know this is, all right. Well, you understand Camille, this isn't something Certainly in my generation, you know, when I was nine years old, I didn't say, oh, when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I get it. And you get it. And I'm from Chicago. You know, I'm from the Midwest. We don't even know. What is this word, Akasha? Right? Yeah. It's a Sanskrit word. It's like, oh, don't say that in front of the little kids. But, you know, I was raised in a traditional American Midwestern religion. Um. I was convinced. I don't know what they were teaching. I know what I learned. Yeah. And what I learned is that if I managed well, I would be happy. So I thought, yeah. oh, you know, I love a good formula. I applied the formula. I woke up at the age of 24 with a life that looked fabulous. And I was so sad because mm. none of it made me happy. Mm -hmm. the, I had the apartment. I had the clothes. I had everything I mean, and I had wonderful friends, right? But anyway, I knew something was off. I made the desperate plea to a God I didn't really even believe in, right? 
<laughs> Basically, if you're there, you have got to help me. Well, lo and behold, within a few weeks, I had a moment of spiritual awareness. And I know so many people have these now, right? But it was a moment where I was overcome with an awareness of being fully known, loved, mm -hmm. enjoyed, appreciated. Mm -hmm. And now you know, nothing in my childhood prepared me for that. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I hadn't earned it. Yeah, no. It yeah, I mean, we get this. But what happened was, I just thought, I was 24, I am now 66, but I thought, whatever this is, I must have it, right? I didn't know what it was. Yeah. So I launched out on the path and I spent the next 16 years searching. I went to every workshop. I mean, I had a great time. And I, I did a lot of things that were just terrific and everything helped. But nothing, I kept looking. I wanted to be able to, I don't know if it's recreate or regenerate that same experience. So I heard this woman say, the somebody said Akashic. I'd never heard the word, I thought, but it went into my heart. I thought, oh, this is a hint, you know, in my business, yeah. we call that a sign. So I went to this, I went to this class. I did what she said. It was a very interesting situation. I didn't quite understand anything, but I opened my records and I was overcome with the same experience of being completely known and loved and I'm going to say enjoyed or cherished, something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. And I said, whatever this is, that was in 1994. Okay. Uh, okay. So now, but here was the thing. Prior to that, in the mid 80s, well, actually, it was about 87, I left corporate America, much to the chagrin of my parents, but I left corporate America to read tarot cards. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Now, I, so I did that for a couple of years. Then I did, then I had a practice of um, shamanic healing. I did classic core shamanism. And I, I had a wonderful practice. I loved it. But, you know, I thought, oh, my God, I am just like the whitest white girl. What, what oh, is this? Really? Are you sure? I know. Do you know what I mean? I would look in the mirror and I'd be hopping around with the feathers. And I was like, oh, this is just wrong. It just was incongruent, right? Yes, right. Yeah. I was like, there has to be a way to connect with this dimension of soul. That's right. simple, right? Simple. So 1994, I come into the Akashic Record. I drop everything. I am riveted by this experience. And I begin, I, I, I stopped doing shamanic work and I started doing Akashic Record readings. And okay. I've been doing them exclusively ever since. So this really uh, helps me. So one of my big questions for sure. holistic entrepreneurs yes, yes. is like, did you start with a day job and you uh, and you started your practice, your business part time, or did you you were fully out of your day job before you started the business end? Um, okay. Okay. Here's how this goes. <laughs> when I first started, I um, when I first started doing readings. I was doing tarot card readings. Right. I had a I had a job in corporate America. It was a very good job. I hated it, but it was a good job. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. And what I did was I did readings in the evenings and on weekends. One day after after like two years of that, I woke up and I realized something had to give. I could not work full time at a job that I hated, which was really exhausting and do good readings yeah so i flipped the cosmic coin and i thought i'll try this now i want you to know i encountered fear oh my god the terror of 20 lifetimes right this this move right letting go of the corporate job and going into card readings ugh, it, it really i had to deal with all my fear all, all my questions, all my concerns, everything came up. And what I ended up doing was by day, I would, um, I had a house cleaning business, 
because I thought, like, I don't right. do well. Like, what I what I noticed was that if I couldn't pay my rent, I couldn't yeah. serve you well. Yeah. That's all there was to it. So I found it much more honorable for me to make the money I needed to make. Yeah. So that I could, when I was dealing with clients, I could actually be thinking about them rather than approaching every client with a dollar sign. I, uh, I think that uh, for me, right, and a lot of the clients that I work with, that's kind of the crux of it, right? If we are in the mode of, I have my own bills to pay and I, I know I need this amount of money every month to pay those bills. If we're thinking like that, it gets in the way of the integrity that says, I'm here for you. And yes, it would be a good fit for you to work with me. Or right. actually, no, it would be better for you to go see a, right. you know, a hypnotherapist go or, exactly. you know, go yes, see, right. you know, and I, so I'll just tell you, like I did it, uh, I now happen to think it was a little bit foolhardy. I left my corporate job before I was ready to start anything. And I can also still see the silver lining because I didn't have a fallback position. I had to keep figuring out how do I make this work? How do I make this work? Like there's good either yes, way you yes, do yes, it. Yes, you yes. just got to recognize that, oh, this is where I am. This is what I have to deal with. And money is part of that pie. Well, this is what I woke up in the middle of this brouhaha, right? This yeah. huge transition. I woke up and I realized that, that it was, it's better for me, right? To be, to know I needed X amount of dollars a month. And if I cleaned houses, I had my independence. I had my, I could think right. about whatever I wanted to, whatever. I could do that and then be free to build my business. And it worked right. very well for me. You know, that there, um, there was much more dignity in that path than the path of just jumping off the building. <laughs> you know, like, ha ha, the yeah. light will save me. Yeah. Well, the light will be with you as you crash. I mean, the light isn't going yeah. anywhere. But, let, you know, but the other thing is that life on this planet costs money. Yeah. It costs money. And, and money is, right, money is our friend. I mean, and so a lot of it is learning how to work with it. And every step of the way, but do you know what, Camille, I'll tell you, even when, so I came into the records in 94. Yep. By 96, I was teaching. I got the pathway prayer that I now teach everywhere, right? I got that in 2001, started the center in 2001. Um, I just lost track of what I was going to tell you. It was obviously sure, it wasn't that important. It's gone. <laughs> anyway, but with, but with, oh, but here was the thing. Do you know, I had a corporate suit in my closet until 2010. Because I kept yes. thinking... My original thought was, I will do this Akashic thing, whatever. I didn't even know what I was doing, right? I will do this until it is no longer gratifying. I thought, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Right? So that yeah. actually is brilliant because um, part of, for me, part of the point of the business journey series is it's so easy like people say oh just do this and six months right just do this and you know one year to six figures or you know six months to 60 clients and it's a journey that happens over time so you yeah. know at a certain point you were able to let go of your housekeeping business and right. just have your full-time Akashic Records business. Right. Uh, now, so here's one of my next questions. Sure. That is, what is the first position you hired? So when you could pay okay. your own bills and invest into the business, but you needed support. I needed help. I right. needed help. Okay. What, what was that? In I think it was um, 19, it was 97 or 98. 
I got um, an assistant and the job of the assistant. Okay, now we're really, I'm going to totally date myself. Her okay. job was to answer my phone, <laughs> yeah, to schedule appointments in the schedule book, to help with the flyers and to do mailings. Then it turns out, you know, I had a big overflow of um, clients. And so she would take the clients, like people who needed readings or wanted readings immediately, and she has gone on to have her own practice. But it worked out great because it was important to me that the clients be served. Yeah. Right. And I couldn't do it alone. So I needed the help. And there she was. But that was the first person. Right. And then after that, interestingly enough, and we were together for a long time, I don't know, maybe eight years. But the next person that I brought on, she came on in the late, more like 99, okay. is still with me today. Okay. And yeah. she was like the office manager, editor person. Um, and, and one person at a time, right, as, uh, as my needs have changed, as technology has entered the picture, every time I hit a threshold, um, you know, I recognize where I need help yep. and who can, but see, I had to learn who could really help me. I think right. that was one, because everyone says they can help and people, people love me. They want to help me, but that doesn't mean they have the skills. I think, Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so I have a lot of people along the way who I just love to pieces. Yeah. But they did, they were not helpful. They made things worse <laughs> because, because well, they did, they didn't have the skills. So yeah, I had to learn about the actual skills required to have a business going. And sometimes you, um, you know, you get in with somebody and the job morphs and changes. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so, uh, but I'm also, by the way, so the first person we hired, I hired was an assistant. Um, she actually started as an unpaid volunteer because she loved the concept of the Holistic right. Chamber of Commerce. She's been full time with me for the last five years, but she's yes. been part of my <laughs> core support for 10 right. years. Right. Wow. Um, right. And those, so for me, like part of the point of this series, why are we talking about this? Because these are things that people don't talk about. We talk okay. about delegating. Well, if you're going to delegate to somebody dependable, sometimes it's not going to be your teenager. And I don't happen to have any teenagers anyway. So it was like, <laughs> can, I, can I afford to pay somebody part time? Right. And who should that be? Well, it was first it was an assistant. Then there was a webmaster and yes. a bookkeeper because for me who especially way back when was living in the story of i'm not good with numbers well mm -hmm. then bring on somebody on your team and the nice thing about bookkeepers is it's not usually a full-time position so sometimes when you're talking about delegating look for is there a part-time opportunity or possibility that you can create that really does work Yes. given wherever you are in your business right exactly 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 yes i have learned ask for help from people who can actually help you. <laughs> yes. I, I yeah. oh, there you go. Yeah. No. It, it doesn't matter. You know, listen, I enjoy a cosmic connection as much as the next person. I really do. I love it. Like when I see an old soul mate, you know, yeah, I love that. Can they balance the books? Maybe not. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so okay. now we're going to yeah. get in uh, a little deeper level of the nitty gritty sure. Sure, sure, before sure. the pandemic. You had a teacher training that was oh. all booked and planned, <laughs> which had to be deconstructed and then reconstructed to go virtual. Yes. So how have you retooled and revamped your entire operation to respond to, you know, <laughs> students needs? but also kind of the guidelines, safety. Well, uh, do you know what this has been, this is really fascinating. And um, so the, the pandemic hits, of course I'm upset and you know, and I'm thinking it's gonna be like maybe four to six weeks. <laughs> 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 anyway, 
So we had, I had a teacher training. I haven't had a teacher training in five years, right? So we set this all up. Everything is set to go. I'm all excited. It's going to be in person in Chicago. The pandemic hits. The venue says, you can't come here. The students are calling, I'm not coming to Chicago. The whole thing tanks. I, of course, am crushed. But here's the thing. You know, for many years, I swore on a stack of Bibles and every other holy book I could get my hands on that I would never do an Akashic teacher training online. Mm. Okay, so you know I had to eat my words. <laughs> I, I'm a friend who says it's always better to eat crow when it's... <laughs> it's warm so i'm like <laughs> eating crow anyway but the long and short of it is i had to look at you know the choice is do i want to meet the needs of the of the um seeker or do i want to be you know stubborn those are really my choices yeah i mean it really so anyway so we re we uh, revamped this entire teacher training now the whole thing is online which I think is hilarious, but it's interesting because it also has a component where it's independent study. I mean, there are a lot of group, you know, we have a lot of group activities. It's running over the course of a year, but it's been very interesting trying to reformat. How do we teach yeah. leadership? How do we teach group activities, right? When yeah. we're not together in person. And so, so that's what we're involved in, but we've really been able to do this. I'm very excited, but do you know what's really interesting is that because it is in a completely new format, the students are from a variety of places around the world and are interested in teaching because my books are in a number of different languages. Yep. They want to be able to teach in their language, in their community, and I happen to have a platform that can support that. But so, so what originally, you know, I was, I was very upset about this, the crash of the teacher training. And it turns out it really is a wonderful thing, right? Because my overarching dream or vision is to make excellent Akashic record training available to the ends of the earth. And there, wow. Behold, this catastrophe has turned out to be a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah, I think this, uh, there have been silver linings yes. that many people have been able to find. Yeah. And we have many of us been put through the ringer of <laughs> where is that silver yeah. lining, but we found it. So, um, okay, so okay. next question. Please. Uh, you just had a book come out entitled oh. Inspired Manifesting Through the Akashic Records, which, yes. by the way, what a great title. Inspired Manifesting is something we all want to do. Yes. The Akashic Records. So you've manifested four books, right. including many international versions in other languages. Yes. And you've got a thriving business around the Akashic Records, which, frankly, when I think back to 20 years ago, was probably not even a familiar term in holistic circles, much less beyond holistic circles. True. What advice would you give to young people or new entrepreneurs who are working to manifest their good work in the world? I think there are, this, you know, this is a great question that really um, it gave me a lot to think about. Because I think, I think there's a couple things. First of all, I have to think about how I can be of service now with what I have, okay? Because the universe always provides everything we need for our next step. Now I have had this vision of bringing the Akashic records to the ends of the earth, but you know, there is no way I could have done this this way in 1996. I think, I think one of the great challenges for people mm. who are, um, whether they're, you know, um, entrepreneurs, right? Spiritual mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, holistic entrepreneurs, is that they're visionaries. And you can have the vision, but what brings the vision to life is when we walk it out, 
or we implement it in bite-sized chunks, baby steps. You know, they have that great spiritual movie, What About Bob with Bill Murray, right? Yeah. But it's like baby steps, one step at a time. I also think it's really important to not debt ourselves. My business has no debt. I, do you know, the idea is do not, it, it is unnecessary to go into debt for a business, if I'm willing to, to really be where I'm at, you know, and, and so, and because I see a lot of people who will say, I got it in a dream, I got it in my records, I'm going to do this business, and they go out and they take out a business loan or something, I don't know what they're doing, you know, or they charge things on the cards, and it, it's just crazy, because you have to have the experience, right? I think you have to be willing to start at the beginning, and to take it one, really take it one step at a time. But I think what's really important is to understand that all of this work is service. And as long as I'm asking the question in my prayer and meditation on a daily basis, who can I help today? How can so, I help them? Yes, it is service. And I'm, you know, and my job is to connect service to we're in business. So it can be service and we can still charge for our services. Just like yeah, when absolutely. you're, you know, when you're going to a doctor. Oh, right, right, right. No, no, right. no. Service. I'm so, not talking about charity work. That's right. different. That's okay. service. Okay. But, but see, if I have the consciousness of who can I help and how can I help them right. with what I have. Right. Okay. Now, listen, if this were 500 years ago, and you helped me, Camille, I would bring you a chicken. <laughs> but I don't have a chicken. Thank you. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to give you some money. Right. Yes, right? exactly. Because yeah. money, money is not money is our friend. Money is good. It's money just is, a medium of exchange. That's all it's, it is. It's not a moral I, issue. Yeah. There is value yes. in what you have for me and I want some. Here's my Here's money, money. Here's and money. you provide the service. So beautiful. Right. Right. Uh, right. Okay, so okay. now, was there one mistake or big challenge other than the pandemic you made that you would be willing to share and also how you overcame it or what you learned from it? Okay, okay, and so now listen, truth be told, you know, I love a good mistake. When I make a mistake, I like to make expensive mistakes. So I only make oh. them once. <laughs> uh oh. Part of, I think, part of the path is to sit down and know that, listen, as human beings, you know, I don't know everything. I will make mistakes. Am I still willing to put myself out there knowing I'm probably going to make mistakes? Okay. A couple of, a couple of things that have been really challenging for me personally. One is I did not, you know, I'm not a business person, right? I mean, I, I just, I've had to learn so much. Yeah. Oh my God, I've had to learn everything. I'm not that person, right? That's, that's me too, yes. Now, thank goodness I like to learn, so it works out well. But, but what this means is that, do you know, so my first book, okay, I write a book, How to Read the Akashic Records. There are no books on the topic at the time. It's really, it, you know, it's a book that launched a movement. That's all very nice, especially, I love hindsight. It's like, oh, it was great. I want you to do something. I did not, I didn't know anything about publishing. I knew nothing about publishing. I didn't even know what the job of a publisher was. It was during, it was right, it was like in the early, whatever, the last decade. And, right. you know, there was a whole, there was a whole glamour. There was the glamour industry around spiritual teachers. And I thought you write a book, you sit on the lanai and you drink iced tea. I mean, I didn't know. I thought I was going to like meditate and go for lunch. Ha, right. ha, ha. Well, was I wrong? So yeah. I had to learn. Here's what I learned. The job of a publisher is to produce books. That's all, that's it, that's it, that's it. And if I want to share my work with others, that's on me, okay? Yeah. So, so that, was, that was a huge learning, huge learning. Um, 
the other thing is that that my you know like what i found is that some of my personal vulnerabilities and um challenges i mean really have bled into my professional life of course so after my third book i thought well this is it i'm going to get myself a real marketing and pr person well you know she just blew a lot of smoke at me and jazzed me up and threw glitter at me and i was like oh she this is she's going to save me she's going to do it she's going to get me on the world mm -hmm. stage whatever i thought and she was she was really a great salesperson. <laughs> anyway, so I gave her my credit card number and you know, she didn't know how to write a sentence. I mean, it was terrible. It was just terrible. It was months of agony. And I realized though, my you know, of course I wanted to blame her, easy to do. But the truth of the matter is I was so desperate. I so wanted to believe her. I would, have right. believed, I would have believed anybody, you know, if the right. circus is now in town, right? Here's my credit card. So I learned, what I learned is first, then I learned, I don't, I really don't need to be saved. Do you know, you understand the idea of being rescued? I mean, how right. ancient is that? That's some crazy old idea. But the fact of the matter is, what I like to think of in my work is who's in front of me and how can I share with them? in a way that will be helpful. And so has been, that's really worked. So how do you, uh, I think the holistic way we say it is, how do you spread the word? The business way of saying it is, what are your favorite marketing tools, right? How do you reach those people who need to hear about you and the Akashic Records, maybe would love to sign up, are ready to sign up, Okay. When they find the tool, how do you reach them? Okay, okay. So there's a number of things. There's a number of things. So first of all, at the level of like clients, what I really have come to believe in, it's very good to have one satisfied client with a big mouth. That's my, that's my first, okay? Then yeah. the next thing is to experiment. So, you know, we have the email list, we send the emails. What yeah. I really understand about marketing, I'm not a marketing person. What I understand about marketing is that this is a way of letting people know what's available. Yeah. Right? So there's yeah. the email, there's the Facebook, and um, I don't know what else. Yeah, we don't call it the Facebook. It's just Facebook. Facebook. I call it Facebook. <laughs> social, social media. Okay. Social, social media. I do all the basics. The basics. But... But and you, you know, have a team that helps. I have a team that helps, but you know, I've been doing this a long time. I didn't, you know, I woke up, I realized I have, I have a team of seven people, seven regular people, but you know, I haven't always had this. Yeah, no. This has been over the last, it's like one at a time. It's like Gothic architecture, right? Actually, it's like old Irish architecture. Well, we had another baby, let's build another room. That's the way my business has gone. And it's yeah. all a matter of weaving it together. And it takes time. So, you know, if you are new at this, then just recognize that just as our personal journey happens over time, our yeah. business journey also happens over time. Um, okay, so Linda, we okay, are- Okay, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with starting at the beginning. Right. See, and especially with our clients, like I, I work with a lot of people who are building their practice, right? And they will say to me, I got it in my records. I am worth $300 for an hour. That may certainly be true. You may be worth $1,500 an hour. I don't know. But you know what? If you've only done five readings in your life, no one's going to pay for that. So, yeah. so I think everyone has to make the decision. Do you want to have a, a fancy price tag or do you really want to help people? Oh, here's how I say it. How do you say it? Are you Target or Tiffany? And this world has room for both Target and Tiffany. They are both very, <laughs> very successful companies. Yes, 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 yes. One yes. provides a... Uh, 
I'm, I'm not even sure I want to say a lower quality, though certainly in the world of jewelry, the jewelry I get at Target, low quality. That's right. <laughs> and the jewelry I get at Tiffany, hmm, high quality, right. right? But the price points are different and their business models are different. Yeah. Tiffany has a much smaller, more exclusive clientele. Right. Everybody right. goes to Target. Right. So, and that's very interesting. It's important that we have both. Yes. It's important that people have an affordable starting point for their holistic journey. Mm -hmm. And it's also important that people who maybe have a bigger budget and value things that way, like, you, you know, okay, speaking of dating yourself, <laughs> right? Um, there used to be Levi's or Calvin Klein's. And some people, frankly, were spending a lot of money to get a pair of jeans with a particular name on them. You know, still I jeans, like <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so this has been wonderful. We okay. do want to get into the breakouts. Okay. Is there one last closing tidbit that you want to share with everybody that will be included as part of this interview? Okay, so here's the other thing. I think especially in the spiritual work, there is a mythology that there's no effort required. It is a lot of work. If people, if you want to work, the opportunity is certainly here. But if you don't want to work, don't do this because you're, it, you'll break your own heart, right? And if you, if you're interested in the fast track to wealth, this might not be it. I would say go trade, you know, go trade commodities or <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Go, go do the market because this is, this is really, um, it is, it is a path that will support you um, as, as you grow. Okay. And that's what, but it, there, there are no advances on this path. It's, do you know what I mean? Like the path doesn't pay you before you start. As you go, the path will certainly nurture and sustain you. This path is not a get, get rich quick scheme. It is a, uh, I sometimes say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Oh, it's a marathon. And <laughs> when you stay supported, it is oh, well it's worth it. It's, it's a, you fun. know, it's where fun. I am now, logically, would not have happened had I not started surrounding myself with the holistic tribe, the holistic right. community. I would right. not be, you know, so is it worth it? Totally. But um, don't let anybody sell you the stories that. Uh, okay. So okay. Thank, thank you, Linda. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>